Now that we've learned about confidence intervals, we can use this information to move into what is called the one sample case. In this situation, we are going to test our first hypothesis. The situation is the same as when we constructed the confidence interval. We'll have a sample of subjects from a population with a known mean and a known standard deviation. We'd like to determine whether the mean score of our sample is equal to or significantly different from the population mean. Our sample data are the same that we used before. We know from previous research that the mean value in the population is 80, standard deviation is 6.5. Remember in our sample of 16 12 year old boys our mean was 77. The question is, is 77 really different from 80? Or could this simply be explained by chance or sampling error? Another phrase that you'll often hear is, is 77 significantly different from 80? Or did it simply occur as a result of chance? Here are our hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that the sample mean is equal to the population mean. That's to say there's no difference between 77 and 80. Our alternative hypothesis is that the sample mean of 77 is different, significantly different, from the population mean of 80. Now here are the steps that we will use for our first hypothesis test. First, we calculate the standard error of the mean, as we did before, to be equal to the population mean divided by the square root of our sample size. In our case, the standard error of the mean is 1.625. Step two, we want to convert the mean of 77, our sample mean, to a z-score based upon a distribution that has a mean of 80 to determine where it is in our theoretical sampling distribution. The z-score equivalency would be, recall the z-score, x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, so our x is 77 minus the mean, 80, divided by the standard deviation, in our case the standard error of the mean, 1.625. So the 77 represents a z-score of negative 1.845. Step three, if we compare the absolute value of 1.845 to 1.96, remember that the z-score of 1.96 means anything exceeding that value would only occur 5% of the time by chance. So we conclude that the difference of 3 can reasonably be assumed to have happened by chance. So our decision is to accept the null hypothesis. And that our 77 was simply a chance fluctuation from a distribution that has a mean of 80. Now here's an illustration similar to the one that you saw in the previous video. Notice that the values are slightly different now. The hypothesized mean was 80. What about this 77? Is this 77 so far out in the distribution that we have to conclude the real mean isn't 80? It's something different. Well, if we look at that in terms of z-scores, a z-score for the mean would be 0. The value that we want to see whether or not the 77 exceeds is negative 1.96. Our calculated value was 1.8. Four, five. Therefore, it doesn't fall in the extremes of the tail. Our 77 is a value that could quite possibly occur simply by chance from a population that has a mean of 80.